Growing up, my emotions and body sensations, especially the tender or vulnerable ones, were often a liability. Stop crying before I give you something to cry about, or walk it off, or you're fine, were staple statements that were often shared in my family for generations. And I learned early that those tender feelings and sensations could lead to spankings or a perception of me that I was weak or dramatic. So I shut them down. But over the years, I learned that our feelings and body sensations are actually signposts or alarms that give us insight into what our body, mind, and spirit need to be healthy in any given moment. Cutting ourselves off from our feelings and body sensations is like knocking down the wailing fire alarm in your home. Have you ever done that? Maybe you burn something on the stove and the smoke sets off your fire alarm and you get annoyed with the alarm and you step up on a chair and with a broom handle, you just knock the fire alarm off the ceiling. (laughs) Have you ever done that? (laughs) Well, when we train ourselves to ignore our feelings and body sensations, it's like knocking our body's fire alarm off the ceiling. You may get immediate relief from the difficult feelings and sensations that the alarm is creating within you, but you probably won't recognize the basic needs that you're ignoring until your house, i.e. your body, is being consumed by the flames of overwhelm, impatience, and exhaustion. Now, what might that look like? Well, for me, it looked like exhaustion even after a good night's sleep, cloudy brain, less creativity irritability, a lower desire to do things that I know I enjoy simply because I was tired, more aches and pains, often because I didn't recognize issues when they were little. Fun fact, I walked on a broken foot for a week because I brushed it off as not a big deal. Yeah, that's super Saiyan level shutdown right there. Okay, I'm just saying. (laughs) Now, little caveat. This tendency to ignore our body signals, it doesn't make you a bad person. So don't beat yourself up. When stressful times hit, it's not uncommon for us to revert to old habits that worked. So if you do this, it's because this tendency served you very well at some point in your life. Yay, celebrate! The parts of you that ignore the fire alarm are doing exactly what they know to do to keep you safe and sane. And... Knowing what you know now, that ignoring your body signals long-term is not helpful, right? The key is to notice when you do this and course correct as much as you can. So what might that look like? I'll tell you what I did. I took intentional steps to reinstall my system's fire alarm. First, I started working with a mental health professional that understood my symptoms I visited my doctor more, but the biggest step I took for myself was that I consciously checked in and followed my body and mind's needs and impulses. When I felt tired, I stopped what I was doing and I took a break. When I was hungry, I paused and I ate. When I was thirsty, I filled up a water bottle and drank. When I had to pee, I peed versus crossing my legs to finish those final three emails. Now, this might sound like common sense for some of you, But I know for others of you, this is revolutionary. (laughs) It was for me. Now, how often do you do these things? Listen to your body's alarm bells and give yourself what you need before you hit five alarm fire mode. I'll admit, this was hard at first. My body's initial need for a long time when I first started this was go lay down which led a very productive part of me to throw a temper tantrum and yell things like, oh my God, I don't want to lay down. What's the benefit of that? I've got work to do. You can't make me. (laughs) But you know what? When I followed that impulse and met my body's need, I found that it actually felt good and was just what I needed. So here's my question for you. Is your body's fire alarm still installed or have you knocked it out? Do you pay attention to your needs and impulses early or do you wait for your body to wail because the flames are shooting (laughs) out of every orifice? What would it be like to commit to one day, heck, one afternoon 
to checking in with your body, mind, and spirit at least once every couple hours. Then listen to the needs that you hear, that you notice, and then follow the impulse that arises within you. Try it out and let me know what you notice. I'll see you next time.